All right, uh, Fridays we talked about, Thursday and Friday we talked about angular velocities, uh, working with angular velocities. And uh, we had arc lengths, we had area sectors. Uh, so we had a worksheet that dealt with all those put together. Plus there were some review ideas in regard to radians on there, uh, degrees, minutes, seconds, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, questions, things that you'd like me to go through? Solutions, once again, were provided for you, so hopefully you check your solutions. Other things you need me to go through. Yeah. 14.6. Who? 14.6. 14.6. Number 14. Yeah. I don't see where you see a point six. Yeah, I don't think yours does. I don't have it. Yours does. Strainer equals 112 degrees. Oh, okay. Then under twelve point seven degrees. Then equals one hundred and twelve degrees, seven minutes, sixteen seconds. And we want to determine what our reference angle is. Huh? My old man and me. So you have 112 degrees, 7 minutes, 16 seconds, and you want to determine what your theta reference is. Okay, by definition, theta reference is angle formed by the x axis. And the terminal side of an angle. Well, first off, we need to get a picture down here. We get a picture. Uh, we have to throw a quadrant here. What quadrant do we go into for 112 degrees and some change? Which quadrant do we go into, Ella? Sorry, what? Second. second quadrant. So we are in the second quadrant with our rotation. So we rotate 112 degrees. Seven minutes, 16 seconds. Now the reference angle by definition, once again, is the angle formed by the terminal side and the x-axis. So you have the terminal side and the x-axis, and this is your theta reference. So we have to calculate this amount. Well, what do we have to do to calculate that amount? Ethan, what we got to do? Now we, we don't have to convert it to a decimal. I mean, we can we could if we wanted to, but what would you have to do once you convert it to a decimal? Subtract from 180. So let's not convert it to a decimal. Let's just subtract from 180. So you have 180 minus the 112, 7 minutes, 16 seconds. Well, this goes back to the idea, if you had the value of 11 minus 3.74, and you had to subtract those decimals, and you did not have a calculator. You did not have a calculator. And you had to subtract those two values. What would you have to do to subtract those two values, 11 minus 3.74. What do we do? Uh, uh, Marlon, what do you do? Yeah. Add a decimal point and two zeros. So 
know, we have 0 minus 4 we can, can't do, and 0 minus 7 we can't do. So then we have to go through the aspect of borrowing. So we borrow from the 11, making this a 10. And that makes this a 10, but we need to continue to borrow to get over to here. So we borrow from the 10, making this a 9, and this is a 10. Now we can subtract down to give me 6, give me a 2, and give me a value 7. That's the same mental man, uh, method of madness we have to follow when dealing with the minutes and seconds. We can add our zeros here. Zero minutes and zero seconds. We can borrow from the 180, making it 179. How many minutes do we have with the one number, with the one degree though, right now? Seven. Or 60. 60. We have 60 minutes in the one degree. But that, we're not finished yet because we're going to borrow from the degree or from the minutes to give us the seconds. So we borrow a, a minute here, making it 59 minutes, but then how many seconds, Isaac? 60 seconds. So now we can subtract down. We have 60 minus the 16, which gives us 44 seconds. We have 59 minus 7, which is 52 minutes. And then we can subtract here to give us a 7, give us a 67 degrees, 52 minutes and 44 seconds. Other questions? Yeah. Number 12. Does number 12 R equals 6? Next 6. We have to find, let's see, R is equal to 6 meters. X is equal to pi over 6 radians. We have to find what our arc length is. Okay, now, two methods of madness, what we talked about before. We can think of this as a fractional part of an entire circumference of a circle, or we can remember arc length is our radius times our angle measure in radians. Our radius times our angle measure in radians. Once again, the x needs to be in radians. So we can look at this as my radians is 6, or my radians is 6, my radians is pi over 6. The 6s cancel out. So we have pi meters. That's one way of thinking about it. We can also look at this as Pi over 6 is 30 degrees. Pi over 6 is 30 degrees. 30 degrees is what fractional part of an entire circle? And okay, we can look at this as a fractional part. Thirty degrees would be what fractional part of the circle? One twelfth. We have thirty over three sixty, which is one twelfth. Then we can look at the circumference of the circle, which is two times pi times the radius. Our radius is. 6 meters, so we have 12 pi meters. Once again, looking at this as We are looking for this measure here as the arc length, 30 degrees. The entire way around, the entire circumference here is 12 pi. 
So that's the entire way around. We want one twelfth of that, so we can take our fractional part times our circumference. So we have one twelfth times twelve pi, which takes us back to pi meters. Once again, either way is correct. Whatever you see, you do. If you want to remember, arc length is equal to the radius times our radians. Number of radians of the degree, that is fine. If you want to deal with fractional part times the circumference, that is fine. Once again, I, I my mental aspect goes to this a little bit more, but that's just me. Other questions? Uh, today, uh, once again, uh, as, as we talked about at the beginning of this class, you're going to see things that you're familiar with. You're going to see some things that you're not familiar with. Uh, the things that we just completed, never seen that before. Uh, things that we went through or we're going to go through today, you should have seen, we should have seen before. Uh, so that your familiarity and your comfortability to it should be pretty good. Um, just very quickly, uh, let's do the third one. 290 degrees, what's your reference angle? 290, what's your reference angle? Just get our, get start our brain here. What would be your reference angle, 290? Let's get, draw your picture. Make sure you draw your picture in the correct quadrant. Your answer to somebody around you. Sarah, what quadrant are we in? Quadrant four. A reference angle, once again, terminal side and x axis. How will you get for reference angle then, Sarah? 70, 70 degrees. Today we're going to talk about the idea of trigonometric ratios. When we have a right triangle, when we have a right triangle, we have what is called trigonometric ratios. Trigonometric ratios are ratios of sides of the right triangle. We have a side, which is defined to us as length of the leg opposite the angle theta over length of the hypotenuse. Once again, the symbolization we have for sine is S-I-N. But even though it's S-I-N, we still say it's the sine of the angle of theta. It's not the sin of the angle. The angle did nothing wrong. So it's still the sine. When you have DR in front of somebody's name, you just go, you know, just go, you call him the doctor. When you have the cosine of an angle, the length of the leg adjacent to the angle over length of the hypotenuse.
And then our tangent is length of leg opposite the angle theta over length of the leg adjacent the angle. Okay, we use two terms in here. We need to review the idea of a leg and a hypotenuse. We talked about a right triangle. How do we know the legs of a right triangle? What's the definition of a leg of a right triangle? How do we know which one the legs are and which one is the hypotenuse? Yeah, the two, two sides that make the 90 degree angle are the legs, the hypotenuse is the side that is opposite. So when we form a right angle, we have a leg and we have a leg. Those are the two legs that form the right angle and then the hypotenuse is opposite the right angle. We have opposite over hypotenuse, we have adjacent over hypotenuse, we have opposite over adjacent. I used to be a firework kind of person. Oh, ah, oh, ah, with respect to Remembering sine, cosine, tangent. I've learned other things as I've gone along. We have our trigonometric Indian. I'm sorry, guardian. Sokotoa. The other thing I've learned as I've gone along some old horse caught another horse taking oats away. My suggestion is when you get a test, you write that on top of your paper. We have the reciprocal functions, the cosecant, the cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine of theta. We have the secant, which is the reciprocal of the cosine of theta. And the cotangent, whoopsie. The cotangent is the reciprocal to the tangent. The codes do not match up. C goes with S, S goes with C. Secant goes with cosine, cosecant goes with sine. C goes with S, S goes with C. The codes do not match up. Some nice things about trigonometry and dealing with these right triangle ideas. The sine cosine tangent of some angle theta will equal the sine cosine or tangent of its reference angle. So the sine of theta is equal to sine of theta reference. The cosine of theta is equal to cosine of theta reference. And the tangent of theta is equal to tangent of theta reference. The trig ratio of an angle is equal to the trig ratio of its reference angle. The secant of theta is equal to the secant of theta reference. 
The cosecant of theta is equal to the cosecant of theta reference. The cotangent of theta is equal to tangent of theta reference. We have some special right triangles. We have a 30-60 right triangle. We have a 30-60 right triangle. Does anybody remember the ratio or the three values that go with the 30-60 right triangle? Oh boy. Knock some cobwebs out. When dealing with a 30-60 right triangle, the hypotenuse is twice the length of the shortest leg. That is a property of right triangles, or a 30-60 right triangle. The hypotenuse will be twice the length of the shortest leg. How do we know which leg is the shortest? We have a 30-60 and a right angle. Other than because it looks it. How do we know this is the shortest leg? Okay, smallest angle, smallest lock side. Smallest angle, smallest side. So if this is 30, this is the smallest side. This is 60, this is 90. So this is going to be our shortest leg, and the hypotenuse will be always twice its length. Sometimes you'll see carpenters that are trying to square something up. When they're trying to square something up, they're trying to form a right angle. And when they try to form that right angle, they'll measure from the corner of the board one foot out. And then they'll take their tape measure and go two feet along here. If they have one foot out and two feet along here, they will have a right angle here. They will square it up. Okay, using our good old buddy Pythagoras, the third side. Oh, we'll pull them out since we haven't seen them yet. Oh, where'd you go? This is sort of a watermark right now. There we are. We have our good old buddy Pythagoras. If we use our Pythagorean theorem, we would have 1 squared plus x squared is equal to 2 squared. Our third size would be what? Square root of 3. So we have 1, 2, and square root of 3. For our isosceles right triangle, the sides opposite equal angles will be equal lengths. So we have a 1, 1 here. Using our good old buddy Pythagoras, we have 1, 1, and the third side is the square root of 2. You will be asked to find exact values. Uh, we're going to change that to 225. We want to find the sine of 120 degrees, an exact value for the sine of 120 degrees. So as always, we draw a picture, draw a picture, draw a picture. 
120 degrees puts us into which quadrant, Jay? Quadrant number two. Let's complete our right triangle that encompasses our reference angle. Because per the property up above, the sine of 120 will equal the sine of its reference angle. Well, if theta is 120 degrees, what is the measure of the reference angle, Paige? 60 degrees. So we have 60 degrees here. So we now have a 30-60 right triangle. Throwing in our values. Across from the 30 is a 1. My hypotenuse is 2. And across from the 60 is the square root of 3. Now what we have to watch out for is if, if I put a point right here at the corner of or the vertex point up here, what would be the ordered pair? What would be the ordered pair of that point? My x and my y value. What would be the ordered pair? Today, what would be the ordered pair? What do I go horizontally? What do I go vertically? Hmm? That's what well, I go vertically. That's my y value. One. So we would have one and square root of three. Yes, no, maybe so. Is there something missing here? Negative, negative sign. Which one's negative? One. one. Because I have to go to the left, a value of one, that's going to be a negative one here, and then a square root of three up. So now using my trig ratios, I want to find the sine of this reference angle. So the sine of 120 would be what value, Jacob? Square root of 3 over 2. Square root of 3 over 2. Now, if you clearly clack into your calculator, you're going to get 0.866 and so on. Okay? I don't want decimal equivalents. I want exact values. So we have square root of 3 over 2. What would be the cosine? What would be your cosine of 120? Justin, what would be the cosine? What do I need to throw with the 1? Negative 1. Negative 1 over 2. So we have negative 1 tooth. Uh, and then, just for giggles, what would be your tangent of 120? Rachel, what would be the tangent? Square root of 3 over negative 1, which would simplify negative square root of 3. If I divide by negative 1, it gives me a negative. Uh, what would be the tangent of 225? What would be your tangent of 225? Draw your reference angle. Complete the triangle. Check your answer to somebody around here.
Nolan, which quadrant are we in? Uh, third. third quadrant. What's our reference angle? 45. 45 degrees. So we can throw in our values. We have 1, 1 square root of 2. Grant, is there any negatives there? Hmm? Both 1's are negative because I go to the left and I go downwards. So if I took a look at this ordered pair, I'd have negative 1, negative 1. So my tangent, defined to its opposite over adjacent, the numerator gives us what value? Okay, it gives us value 1. We have negative 1 over negative 1, which turns into a positive 1. Terminal side of an angle contains a point 4, negative 3. I want to find the sine, cosine, tangent of that angle. So once again, we need to get a picture down of what we have. We have a terminal side that goes through the ordered pair x is 4. Y is negative 3. So my angle is spinning from here all the way to here, and it's terminating right at that point. So here's my angle theta. I want to find the sine cosine tangent of theta which is the sine cosine tangent of its reference angle. So if we take a look, my reference angle, x-axis and terminal side. Here's our theta reference. We can then complete our triangle that involves that reference angle. If we look at our two legs, my horizontal leg, which is my top leg here, what is the length of the horizontal leg on top, Sydney? No? Four. Four. Sydney, guys, are my vertical leg. Negative 3, because we go down 3. Now we have our good old buddy Pythagoras. Our good old buddy Pythagoras. That we can use to find the third side. Or if we know our Pythagorean triples. If I have a 3, I have a 4. Oh, what's the third side? We have a 3, 4, 5 triangle, or if once again I want to take 3 squared plus negative 3 squared plus 4 squared is equal to the h squared. When I square a negative, once again that gives us positive. So we have 25 is equal to h squared, h squared equals 5. So now looking at that, Brandon, what would be our sign? Looking at the triangle. Negative 3 over 5. Taking our opposite of our hypotenuse. Our cosine, Brendan, would be what? 4 over 5. Four over five. And our tangent... Uh, Marley would be what? Negative three, Negative 3 over 4. Once again, there should be a lot of familiarity here. With respect to the trig functions. The 
some, we didn't get to the bottom ones down here yet. See what you can do at the bottom ones, but we got the ones on the back. Uh, yeah, some reference angles ideas there also, just to review those ideas with respect to reference angles. Um, solutions have been posted for you. QD, as done.